Williams. I'm rocking with G-Spot Sports. Don't 
Oh. I'm in with Country D, point guard, Roman Williams. Um, I know y'all didn't get the victory today, man, but you had a solid game. Uh, talk about uh, what made you choose New Orleans Elite for your AAU experience this year. Oh, I just had to go with uh, New Orleans Elite, uh, Coach Kobe, Coach Greg. They laid out a great uh, plan on the table for me. Uh, I know they get a lot of small point guards in college, and that's my goal. So, I mean, the role with Greg and Kobe for my last year AAU was just, I think it's a good opportunity. All right. Talk, kind of talk about your recruiting process, man. Uh, what, uh, what interest you got and uh, who all offered you so far? My recruitment process has went up. I mean, season uh, season started, went up so much. I picked up Mizzou. I uh, picked up Maryland. I picked up uh, Ole Miss. Uh, a lot of schools, Southern Miss, uh, LA Tech, UAB, Rhode Island, uh, throughout the span of the season. So uh, going out, going into the AU season, looking to get more offers and make my decision in October and November. You got any favorites? Right now, I'm looking at... Uh, I'm really liking uh, probably Ole Miss, what they do with Stephon Moody. Right. Uh, I do a lot of small point guards, so I'm looking to get in that system. Uh, it's one of my favorites, but right now I'm keeping my options open. Also like ULL, okay. Coach Bob Marlin, so uh, just go see what's going to happen. All right. Now, kind of talk about that, man, paving the way for a lot of small guards. You know, a lot of small guards think that, you know, it's tough on them to get scholarships, but you, you know, you got multiple offers on the table. Mm -hmm. And kind of talk about, you know, the kind of example you're setting for the smaller guards th for the future. Oh, when you're a small guard, you just got to go out there every game, play like it's your last. You got to be hungry. You got to be tough. You got to be everything. Diving on the ground, taking charges, and that's what I did today. Just to show my teammates that uh, I want to be the leader of the team, a uh, new team. But uh, when you're a small guard, you just got to do everything on the table. And if you do that, do it well, you're going to be successful. All right, all right. Yeah, a pretty successful uh, junior year, man. Uh, over 30 points in the semifinal game. I know y'all couldn't get it done and, yeah. and, and move on to the championship, but you had a real good game, man. Um, Talk about some things you think that you need to work on going into your senior year for next year. My senior year, I just want to get stronger. I want to get in the weight room more, uh, build up my legs, build up my arms, and, uh, get more consistent on my jump shot. Uh, I mean, there's some games I go off, don't miss a shot. Others, I'm not not the same. So just get more consistent, get stronger, being able to finish around the basket against uh, bigger defenders. Right, and, right. I think my scoring average go up even more. All right, all right. Now, a lot of the media in Louisiana, man, got you ranked as the number one point guard in Louisiana, man. Uh, tell me how that, how that make you feel. Rankings, I, I look at them, but at the same time, I know that uh, they can't save you between the lines. Right, so, right. Uh, when the media ranks me number one or they rank me in the country and all that kind of stuff, I just, it doesn't matter. I don't even think about it. I'll be happy for a while, but when I get in the line, I got to prove myself every game. Right. And unfortunately, I didn't win the night, but I just wanted to make my presence known. All right, all right. What's some, uh, What's the next tournament y'all, New Orleans Elite, playing in? Oh, we're going to Real Deal in Rock, Real Deal in the Rock uh, in two weeks. All right, all right. Yes, sir. All right, man, um, Country Day point guard, junior point guard, Roman Williams, man, the G-Spot Sports. We signing out. What up, what up, what up? Thank y'all for tuning in to G-Spot Sports once again, man. As y'all just seen in my last segment of highlights, I attended the Icebreaker Hoop Fest down in New Orleans, Louisiana at Xavier University. Heck of a tournament, man. Had a lot of talent on display, but I got to give a big shout out to the two teams from my hometown and home of Louisiana, the Louisiana Lightning and the Louisiana Select Pelicans, man. Uh, they won both of they, uh, their uh, tournament brackets. Louisiana Lightning won the 15 and under, and Louisiana Select Pelicans won the 16 and under. Now, they didn't get any highlights of the Louisiana Lightning uh, simply because they are playing at the same time as the Louisiana Select Pelicans, man, and I couldn't record both games at the same time, so I had to pick one. So, But kudos to Louisiana Lightning on winning that uh or winning a tournament, uh, I, I will have y'all on my episode in the near future. Uh, Louisiana Select, I'm, I'm real familiar with this program simply because of a lot of the players on there and uh, with the head coach, Sterling Washington, who's leading the way for them. You know, I've been watching Coach Washington since I was 10, 12 years old. He was coaching those Ellender teams in the 90s that was going to all those state championships and they ended up winning one of them. Uh, Phenomenal coach. You know, he coached those those teams with Lamar Lathan and Juan Stewart, Orlando and Courtney Butler, Ernest Nixon, all those guys from them big from the teams back in the day. You know, they used to give you 32 minutes of pain. Uh, and they really used to give you 32 minutes of pain. So this is a, a phenomenal coach leading the way for the Louisiana Select Pelicans. And no doubt in my mind, he's gonna have them in position to compete at nationals uh when they get there. Some of the players on that Louisiana Select team uh, that really impressed me in, during this tournament was was Coach Washington's two sons, Trent and Trey Washington. These two kids are kind of flying under the radar because they go to Hummer Christian. Um, I think Hummer Christian's in 1A, so they kind of flying under the radar down here in home of Louisiana. But them two kids could play. I really like them. Kobe Hartman from Ellender, he he really impressed me this weekend. Uh, A.J. Rainey, looking like he picked up right where he left off uh, during the high school season from H.L. Bourgeois. I like him. Ja'Cory Ward. The guard from Hummer Christian, he's another one. Uh, 
um Devontae Johnson coming to Christian. Um I like him too. I think I think he has a he has a real good skill set. Um this whole team though, man, I, I could go I can I can name everybody on this team that really impressed me on this team. And um uh, like I said, Coach Washington and uh Anthony Rainey did a phenomenal job putting this team together and I think they were only only gonna get better. So I gotta make sure I catch them uh some more uh the rest of this AAU season. But shout out to the Louisiana Select Pelicans team, man. I see y'all. New Orleans Elite uh, took on uh, the New Orleans Revolution. They ended up losing. But, uh, you know, I, I did a segment with um, Roman Williams, the country day point guard, who was on the New Orleans Elite. Uh, this, this kid right here, this is a phenomenal story for me because this kid is 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, you know, he has multiple scholarship offers. He's, he's getting heavily recruited. But what I like about it so much, you know, a lot of kids you talk to these days, they, they always say, you know, if I ain't 6'1", or 6'2", or taller, you know, I can't get looked at by colleges. He's showing you now that that's a, a myth, okay? If you put in that hard work, you be a student in the game, and you really, really work on your game, you can get looked at by colleges. And that's what Roman is doing, man. He's one of my favorite players in Louisiana. Uh, a lot of the beat riders and a lot of the media have him ranked as the number one point guard for that 2017 class. Uh, and I feel like he's uh, deserving of that honor. You know, you heard what he said in the interview. You know, that doesn't mean anything when you get between those lines. And he's right. And that's the kind of mindset you have to have when uh, you're trying to be the best, man. You got it. nothing. You can't take nothing for granted. You can't take these some of these rankings and let it get to your head. You got to keep working. So that's just to show some of you guards out there that's coming up eight, ninth grade that might be short. Look, you can you can get a chance to um, get scholarship offers too, but you got to put that work in. And that's what Roman Williams is doing, man. Shout out to him, man. Uh, whatever school he ended up picking in October, November, I think he said he's gonna make his decision. Uh, they're gonna have a phenomenal player, man. I love him, man. Like I said, he's one of my favorite players in Louisiana. Uh, New Orleans Revolution. They ended up beating New Orleans Elite. Uh, that was really an upset uh, <laughs> to a lot of people. Nobody expected the New Orleans Revolution to beat the New Orleans Elite. Uh, but they was led by Devontae Jason, you know, the two-sport athlete. You know, he, he's committed to LSU uh, for football, only in the 10th grade. Uh, he, came out, he came out with it on his mind. You know, he was saying, I heard him saying before the game, you know, he really wanted to come out and show people that, look, we can beat the New Orleans Elite, you know. We can we can beat these people, and they came out and got it done. So, uh, shout out to them. Uh, I, I I really like the way they they looked out there. Uh, so I'm I'm, I'm anxious to see how they gonna look on this AAU circuit going forward. But um, y'all let me know what y'all think about these AAU highlights, man. And uh, by my by, by my um. My one of my favorite players, Roman Woods. Let me know what y'all think. I mean, if y'all don't know about him, man, go Google him. Um, go look up uh, some of his highlights on YouTube or something. I, I have a few of them on some of my previous episodes, man. The, the kid scored 36 points in the semifinals uh, against Riverside this, uh, a couple weeks ago. So y'all go check him out, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about some of these highlights, man. It's G-Spot Sports, man. I'm signing out. It's very, very funny to me how... All these people in the media and some of these NBA draft analyst experts are uh, coming around on these shows and saying that they wouldn't pick Ben Simmons number one. Man, I usually don't entertain ignorance, but this is really absurd to me. These people are blaming Ben Simmons for the reason why LSU didn't make the tournament. You know, they're saying he's not good as he as everybody think he is. He's overrated. I mean, really, bro? Y'all said, first of all, LSU didn't make the tournament because they're coaching bad. And it's been bad. And I've been saying that for a while. Uh, now, I will say this. You know, I'm, I'm not going to just uphold everything Ben Simmons did. You know, I, I had some games where I thought that he could have been a little more enthusiastic. Uh, he had some games where I think he, he should have kind of uh, imposed his will a little more. But, you know, the kid, 17 years old, 18 years old at, at best, I mean, you can't blame this kid for why LSU didn't make the tournament. That's number one. Number two, he has a great skill set. He can handle the ball at 6'10 like a point guard. He has phenomenal vision. He can, he can make pinpoint passes. He blocks shots. He rebounds. I mean, the guy is a stat sheet stuffer. Why you wouldn't pick him number one, it beats me. They're talking about picking, picking Brandon Ingram from Duke over him? Really? Bro, let me tell you something. If whoever gets that number one pick, Soon as you make the selection to pick somebody else and they go to the next team, I'm calling you up and firing you on the spot. I mean, why in the hell would you pick anybody else over Ben Simmons? I think this is a can't miss prospect. Uh, but it's all depend it's gonna all depend on that he if, what, what situation he goes to too. You know, but guess what? I'm riding and dying with it. Straight up.
People can say what they want about what he did during the season, uh, missing class, and, you know, he didn't look like he was into these games. I, I understand all that. I hear what you're saying. But, look, you can't coach some of the stuff he do. I'm sorry. You can't coach it. This kid has one of the best skill sets I've seen in a long time. Probably since LeBron and Kevin Durant. And that's what it is. This kid needs to be in, in the NBA. He doesn't he need to be in the college game because, obviously, he felt like, you know, he was better than college. Now, I'm not saying that's – I'm upholding it. I'm not saying that's the right thing, the way to think. But you could tell that he felt like, you know, he was just kind of going through the motions some of these games. He's ready to be in the NBA. This guy's an NBA player, no doubt about it. But, you know, not picking him number one is going to be a big mistake. Now, some of the teams that's probably going to be in the running for that number one pick, the Timberwolves, 76ers, the Lakers, the Pelicans, you know, out of all those situations, guess what? If the 76ers happen to get the number one pick, I would probably like to see him pass on a pass on Ben Simmons because he don't need to go to the 76ers. I mean, that is just an atrocious uh, <laughs> uh, team right now. That team is just it's, – it's horrible what the ownership is doing with that team. Uh, I would like to see him go to either the Timberwolves or the Pelicans. I know that's, 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 a, that's a long shot, but that would be a good landing spot for him. That's good situations for him to go into. And, you know, we would love to have him down here in New Orleans with the Pelicans. Him and Andy Davis. Oh, my God. Drew Holiday. And with Alvin Gentry coaching him right now, you know, with the kind of offensive guru he is, that'll be a great situation for him. The Timberwolves with Sam Mitchell, you know, you got Zach Levine, Carl Anthony Town, Andrew Wiggins, that'll be a nice situation for him. So that'll be two situations I would love to see him go for. That's put him in a situation where I can see him that's being set up for him to be successful. The 76ers, the Lakers, I, I don't want to see him go. I don't want to see him go that place, them places. First of all, they're going to put too much pressure on him. To, to be great as soon as he get drafted. I mean, I don't want to see him go there. But, you know, passing him on number one, yeah, it's going to be a mistake. I'm telling you now. This kid is a, a can't-miss prospect in my mind. Uh, I think he's only going to get better. And I think the NBA the NBA game is going to even show people what kind of skill set he had. Because in college, you know, they run a lot of zone. You know, so, you know, when you zone uh, certain, certain teams in college, it's hard for them to school. And you saw that with LSU this year. They, they struggled against a lot of zone teams. So, you know, in the NBA, people particularly uh, particularly like to play man. So, and I think that's something he's going to thrive in. You know, the NBA is an up-and-down game, too. They gonna, they gonna, <laughs> he's phenomenal in the open court. So, you know, that's going to be more to his skill set when he gets to the NBA. But y'all let me know what y'all think about these absurd comments some of these people in the media are making that he shouldn't be the number one pick. Or do y'all think? He should or shouldn't be the number one pick. Y'all, let me give me y'all feedback on this, man. I want to know what y'all think about this, man. It's G Spot Sports, man. I'm signing out.